everybody, welcome back. It's Justy, and we are back out at our shooting station today. I've never done this before, but I've been collecting Lolita for about four and a half ish years now, and I figured it was about time I made a wardrobe video. I'm so excited. These are one of my favorite videos to watch on YouTube, so I'm excited that I get to do something similar. Now, my wardrobe is definitely not as impressive as a lot of Lolitas out there, but I think I've done a pretty good job and I've built up a good collection. Today we're gonna be doing uh, main pieces and then blouses and outerwear. If you enjoyed this or you would like to see the rest of my wardrobes so with things like bags, shoes, tights, fun stuff like that, please leave me a comment down below letting me know and I can do the second half. I just figured I'd start with the most exciting stuff. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. I've been so, so happy collecting up all these different pieces. I did do a terrible job of following the rule of, hey, kind of stick with one specific color scheme style to start uh, because you have to buy all of the accessories and everything to go with it. And if you have a bunch of different ones, that gets really hard. I didn't listen at all. And that's on me. <laughs> I liked so many things that I just thought, well, I'll buy whatever and I'll make, I'll work it out as I go. And I'm, I'm doing fine. I certainly don't have as many accessories for all of these as I would like. Some of them are a little hard for me to cord right now, but I love all my pieces, so I can't be upset. I see something, I love it, I have to buy it. I don't really think about its cohesiveness in my wardrobe yet, though I'm sure I will get to that point because it's gonna start driving me crazy that I don't have enough to do these uh, intricate outfits. <laughs> but that's our little opener. Let's jump right in and we will start with what I'm actually wearing since it's on. This salupette, if that's the right pronunciation, is by Elegy. I bought this relatively early on. It was the one of a kind on Elegy, the only one you could buy, and I instantly love it. The white polka dots make me think so much of Minnie Mouse, so there's absolutely no way I couldn't have it. It's fun, it's super comfy. The one part that I find hard about it is that you do have to obviously have your blouse showing, which means that a lot of these blouses are very see-through and I gotta deal with that when I put it on, but it's fine. Clearly it's been dealt with. <laughs> I also used to have a white bow that went with this one and I could not find it. I am not sure where that is at all, what happened. The last time I wore it, I was taking my mom out for high tea in this outfit, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's why we are left with just some flowers today because my bow is missing. I will talk about the blouse, but we're gonna do that when we come back to the blouse section. Otherwise, it feels like I'm jumping all over the place. Let's continue with just main pieces first. Hmm? So I've kind of got things organized based on color, and then within that color, what I like bought for a second, third. It's it's not a, a perfect system but it's been working for me so far. So at the front of the pack, we have blue. And this is also the very first dress I ever purchased for Lolita at all. I bought an Infanta set that came with the dress, the head bow, so I would immediately have two things that matched right away. I've got the waist ties off right now. These are a pain to tie, and I hate tying bows. I am still not good at it, as pictured here. So I just take these ones off. I usually don't wear this with the waist ties. Here is the print at the bottom, and this is the Sleeping Bear JSK. Very, very cute. I've managed to cord this in a couple different ways now, which is so exciting and really the big indicator to me that I'm kind of moving along in this fashion that I have pieces that I can cord a couple different ways now. That makes me so happy. This will forever be my baby. You know, it's it's my first. I don't think I'll ever be able to let it go. To be honest, I'm going to stop talking about letting them go because I don't think I'll be ever able to let any, any of these go. I don't picture myself selling. I just love them so much. Alrighty, next we have this Star Constellation dress. Now, I bought this off a Facebook Lolita seller, and a while ago when I went back to try and figure out what the brand was so I could get also the name of this dress, uh, turns out they're gone. They don't exist anymore whatsoever. So this is just off-brand now, I guess. It's very cute. Um, the stars glow in the dark. How could I say no to that? I'm a big fan of stars. I have all sorts of galaxy print and stars in my regular wardrobe, so I definitely knew I needed a star print Lolita dress. It's like the worst accord. It's such a pain in my butt. I think I need more white accessories. That might help, 
but whatever. I love her and I have managed to court it at least once, so I'm happy. I wish I could go out at night so people could see it glow in the dark, but realistically that's probably not going to happen. Alright, that is the blue dress section. Next we have purple. This is Alice in the Pirates, Ticking Clock, Gear of Stardust, and the Unfound Land, I'm pretty sure. Like, longest name ever. And this is my Peter Pan dress. And my Peter Pan dress that is also in my favorite color, purple. As soon as I learned of this dress, it was like way, way back when I was just starting out, literally like the second or third that I purchased, I immediately knew that this was going to be a dream dress. I had to have it. It was Peter Pan. It was purple. I loved everything about it. And then I just decided to just get it. I couldn't run the risk of never being able to get my hands on this dress. So I ordered it from Alice in the Pirates. It was not easy. And I'll admit it is not cheap. But I absolutely love it. This is another one that I find really hard to cord. Apparently the darker ones are just a pain in the butt for me. And also the peach really throws me off. I honestly am not a big fan of the peach in this, but I get it. They're like trying to match the lights down in the cityscape, but um, it's just, it's a pain. And I, I think I just don't have enough dark stuff, but I've managed to do it like a couple different ways now. I think like literally two. So I'm happy and I'm going to keep working on this. This is so beautiful. Uh, my first piece of brand. So that was exciting. Not that I am a huge um, have to be brand person. I have many off brand slash Taobao brand. They make me happy. But this is this is my this is my child. I love this dress so much. All right, that's all we have for purple. So next we have our lone black dress. This is Baby Star Shine Bright Starry Sky and Mother Goose print. I bought this at a swap meet right near the end. I think somebody was like, hey, yeah, like I'll sell this for like 25 bucks. And I was like, well, okay. I can't say no to a $25 cute dress to help build out my wardrobe. It is black, which I've sort of had a hard time courting with the other ones, but the fact that there is so much pink in it and I have a lot of other pink stuff actually makes this one relatively easy for me to cord. It's actually just the socks that are a pain for me with this one. I need to get better socks for it. But it is really cute. I like the animal print down at the bottom and they're all playing their little instruments. Look at the little puppy and his tambourine. So this is cute. Definitely not one that I like plan to buy while I was there, but quite happy with it. So. I don't know if I'll buy many other black dresses. Black really isn't my thing. I'll do like these other dark colors, but I've definitely, as much as I say I've enjoyed jumping around for a couple different styles, I am definitely not a gothic Lolita. Not that there's anything wrong with gothic Lolita. I think you guys are beautiful. I just am not a huge black person, and I don't like a lot of the motifs. Obviously this one is not gothic. I am very aware of that, but a lot of gothic obviously comes in black. So I will probably not be going down that route, but I have at least one black dress, you know? Filling out the wardrobe. Alrighty, we're in pinks now. This is Miwako Sweet Watermelon JSK that I actually bought just last summer. Unfortunately, we've been in lockdown and I haven't been able to go on any picnics in which I could have worn this, but that might also be for the best considering I don't have any shoes yet to match with this. Most of my shoes are very dark because I started out with these types of dresses. So I need to get like some white or pink shoes. But this is so cute. I love the material. It is super soft and silky. I like the corsetting down the front. The, the watermelons are so cute. I've said this before, I want to make a whole fruit salad of a wardrobe, and this was step one. So I am really excited for when I get to wear this out. It's so, so cute. I really, I have a better time courting the pinks and stuff. So easy. Just buy a lot of pink. What am I doing with my life? Now this is another one of my like top favorites that I've been able to cord a few different ways, which has been really nice. This is Milu Forest Pride and Prejudice JSK. I love Pride and Prejudice. Super, super big Jane Austen fan, super big Regency fan. So I was actually planning on getting a different dress at the time, but this was advertised to me on my Twitter and I was like, well, that's what I have to get. I didn't plan on getting the pink one originally, but the color I did want was sold out. And honestly, 
I'm very happy that uh, it ended up that way. I love this dusty rose color that's all over the place. I've got a lot of pinks, as I've said before, so it's quite easy for me to cord. And it's really, really cute. I look for any opportunity to wear this one that I can. It's a bit of a heavier dress, honestly, like just in terms of construction and how many layers, which makes it quite warm, but that's all right. I don't mind. I've got a over skirt hanging up here with it that you wrap around and tie. I didn't want it like tied in a bow all the time in case it um, put nasty forever wrinkles in the, the waist tie. I am super proud of the outfits I have managed to make with this one and I look forward to everything I can do in the future. Alrighty, so that was all of our JSKs. Now uh, we are into one pieces, which I only have a couple of. The first one is this angelic pretty castle mirage print. Beautiful. This is a stunning dress. Honestly, not something I had intended on buying. It was at the same swap meet that I got this one. And I was trying it on and because I had a blouse on, I one, didn't have full range of motion of my arms because it was quite tight. And two, you're not really supposed to have like a blouse under one pieces. You can, but it's not ideal. So I actually couldn't get it on very easily. I was struggling. And while I was struggling, unfortunately, one of the buttons of the tie popped off. And at first, I could not find it anywhere. I looked around the whole little changing room bathroom trying to locate it, and I couldn't. So I decided that since it technically had fallen off while I was trying it on, even if it's not my fault the button was very loose, I didn't want any bad blood between me and the Lolita community. And honestly, it is such a beautiful dress. I took ownership and I said, I'm going to... I'm gonna buy it and she was very nice. She's like, you don't have to, it's okay. And I said, no, 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 I'm gonna purchase it. That's my fault. I'm not a big waist tie person anyway, so it's okay if I can't put the waist tie on. So she let me do a nice little payment plan because this was not a cheap dress. And luckily, actually, the button fell into the pocket. So I was able to put the button back on much more securely and she's back to totally normal. I'm not mad I own this dress. This is very beautiful, very Disney-esque, obviously with the Cinderella castle down there. And I want anything Disney or vaguely Disney. That's my goal. <laughs> so I'm glad I ended up with it, but definitely I had not intended to purchase this while I was there. I have not been able to make an outfit for this yet because again, same issue with the watermelon. I don't have any light colored shoes. A lot of my stuff is very dark colored to match these original dresses. <laughs> Should have stuck with the color scheme here, guys. So she is still waiting for her chance in the sun, which will come eventually. I am working on getting a pair of light colored shoes and I've got some different tights coming with an order I've got waiting. So she, she will have her time. And and my only other one piece is this one. This is Bodyline Antique Clock. Again, same swap meet as the other two. It was nearing the end and somebody said, you can literally just have this, I don't want it. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, it's definitely a nice enough color, I don't mind it. And um, at the time, obviously I didn't have all the ones you see here and I was like, I need to build out my wardrobe a little bit more. So I accepted and I took it. I have managed to make one cord for this, which I took photos out in her backyard in a little picnic I set up. It's nice. I don't, I don't mind it. It's not like my favorite. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not a big clock person, but for like picnics and stuff, it is really nice. And it is one of the most comfortable dresses I own. There is so much stirring up here. I can breathe in this and that is a real selling feature for me. So I'm still happy I have it. I don't regret it. I, I didn't pay for it. I don't know how often this will appear in cords, but I mean, maybe. I don't have a lot of, of choices yet, so her time to be in the sun may still come. All right, and then for big main pieces, lastly, we have my one skirt. This is Bogita Starry Night Skirt. I actually bought this with the intention of going under this star dress, which it looks all right. I don't mind it. I do wish these had been silver and not gold, but I didn't pay close enough attention while I was ordering. But I've also now used it under my Peter Pan one as well, which turned out really, really cute, and the gold looks quite nice with that. Unfortunately, it is a very short skirt and can never be just worn on its own as Lolita. So it always has to be an underskirt. The gold bow has not been used yet because it has always, again, been under a dress. But who knows, maybe I'll put this on top of a dress one day to help tie everything in. So I keep it nice with the skirt. Definitely a good purchase. I've since used Bogita for a petticoat because I like this so much. So definitely a good brand that I like. And I do not regret this really, really, really cute star dangly skirt. I just, give me a silver one. 
please. Alrighty, that is all our dresses. We're gonna move along, so I'm just gonna take a moment, turn this around to the other side, and we're gonna keep going. Now that we're in blouses, we're gonna start with again the one that I am wearing. And no matter what I do, I cannot find the information or figure out where the heck I ordered this one from. So we are gonna call it off-brand again. It, it probably is, I have a lot of off-brand. It's very nice. It actually reaches like my wrists, which is so rare for me with the, the leaded um, blouses. So I love it. It's very comfy, very loose. It's one of the few that I can actually properly move around in and I'm not afraid is gonna rip or pop. Next, we have a very off-brand, very first blouse I ever purchased. I got this off a secondhand Lolita site. This has been used so much. It has been such a, a savior to me. Very cute, very light, very breezy, which is nice. Very see-through, so can't ever wear it with something like this unless something's underneath it. But it's comfortable. I have to generally wear these a little push up on my arms because it does not reach my wrists. And the way they're designed, it looks awkward if I wear them stretched all the way out. But it's nice, it's really served its, its purpose for me, and I'm very thankful that this was one of the first ones I picked, as I've been able to use it in multiple outfits. Good job, Justine. This is from 69th Department, a Taobao brand. Very nice, I'm a big fan of all the pleating in it. I think that is very cute. Uh, the only problem with this one is it is a little tight because of the material and the way it's constructed. So last time I wore it, it ripped a little in here and that was actually a KatsuCon, which makes sense. I was running around all day. I was, you know, moving around a lot. I was bending over. So I'm, I'm not super surprised. I'm just not stoked about it. So I do have to be quite careful with this one in the future. I fixed it up with my serger so it, it can still be used. But obviously if I'm not careful, it will rip again. This one also has a hard time reaching all the way to my wrists. So sad, but that is the reality I must deal with. But it's very comfy. Again, a nice kind of chiffon material. This is Your Highness blouse, black with gold detailing, which I actually bought intended for the Peter Pan dress because I needed a darker blouse. And I thought gold would look good with some gold accessories with it. I at the same time bought the same exact blouse but pink and so collar with the gold. I actually really hated that one and have since gotten rid of it. So there you go, I've gotten rid of one Lolita thing. <laughs> but the black one is, is still nice. I still think the gold is a little shiny for my taste but it can work depending on what you wear it with. It's got really nice pearl buttons. I have not worn it in so long that I can't remember if these reach my wrists. I think so though. I think I was less annoyed with this one. It's also got a, a big long velvet tie which I think you're supposed to run through here and make it like a corset but I don't need these to be any smaller than they are so I clearly haven't done it and this one I have only worn with like JSKs and they come all the way up, so it hasn't really been necessary if one day I ever wear it with a skirt, which I don't think will happen, but you know, if it did, I'll put the lacing in. My second black is super off-brand, just a blouse that Steph gave me. I like the see-through sleeves, but the um, opaque middle, I really, really am a big fan of that, and it's got this fun little floopy detailing in the back. I don't know, cute? <laughs> this one I just wore with my Peter Pan dress. I really like the way it worked, so I'll probably do that again. Our last blouse is an off-white. This came with the uh, Miwako Sweet Watermelon set. It's a short blouse, it's called. Very cute, it's got gold running all through it. Super light and breathable. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing under a dress. Not gonna add a whole bunch of extra weight. And the sleeves are short already, so I don't have to worry about trying to get them to my wrists. This is very cute. I really, really love this blouse. I'm glad I decided to get it along with the watermelon set. And I'm excited to try it out with other outfits. I like the gold in this a lot. It's subtle as it runs through. It's very, very cute and summery. Now, if only I could go outside. <laughs> Okay, that is all of our blouses. So our very last stop is gonna be outerwear, yay. <laughs> We're gonna start with some boleros. First, we have a little black bolero, a cotton kari long sleeve, I believe it's called, by HM, HHM or HMHM. I'm not sure if you're supposed to say it or pronounce that some way. I have not yet worn it with anything. I think I intended for one of my darker dresses if I couldn't figure out a blouse situation. 
but it's very cute. I like the tie up in the front so I can do a nice big bow. And it's not too, too heavy. Definitely still not something that I would wear in like summer months. I would get way too warm, but in like fall, it's gonna help to keep me warm. Cause although we're in the outdoor section, you'll find that I don't have a very big range, despite where I live and knowing that I need winter stuff. Next, we have a dusty pink from Bodyline, just L553, doesn't have a name. I bought this one intending to go with my Pride and Prejudice. I brought it to KatsuCon in case I needed something a bit warm. I decided I did not need it and didn't want to wear it with it because this turns out to be a little bit more peach than that dress. Still pretty cute, definitely can be used with something. And again, coming in fall, I'm gonna be very thankful. I'm starting to get my hands on warmer things. I'm not a huge fan of the big bow in the front. I will probably unpin that when I go to wear this but I keep it there so I have it with it and I can choose to do so at the time because as I've lost the white bow for this outfit, I am sure I will lose this bow too if I take it off. All right, we have a cute little cape. This is actually the first piece of outerwear I ever purchased. I bought it from another Lolita who lives in the area. I went and met up with her. It is off-brand. It's very cute, nice cream color. Not super heavy, so certainly not gonna be worn in the winter, but good to give you a nice extra layer against the wind. Haven't worn this one yet. I actually haven't really used any of my outerwear because I hate going out in the cold, but you know, when we're allowed to go to conventions again, I will probably need it. It's very fun. I love capelets. I honestly wish I had more. All right, it's time for our very last item of the day. This is from a brand called uh, Gluttonous, which, the fact that the tag's still on tells you I have definitely not worn it yet. This is the Frost Drop Cloak. I finally got something properly warm for when it is winter. This is so beautiful. It has got the uh, cherry blossoms all over it. It's this lovely nudie peach color. I love it. It has got little slits for your hands to come through, although I have found that they're in an awkward position when I quickly tried this on, so I probably will just keep my hands coming out the front, but you know, if they work for you in your build, there you go. It's got a really nice uh, fur-lined hood as well, obviously fake fur, and everything inside is soft and fuzzy and warm. I can tell you, if I ever go out in the snow, I am gonna be toasty as hell. Heck, I just want to live in it. Who needs coats? And that's everything. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? I am so happy with the progress I have made in my wardrobe. Obviously, it is not the biggest, as I am a little bit slower at collecting, looking for very specific things that I like, trying not to spend a million dollars all at once. <laughs> I've already had a couple new things on the way, I will admit, that I've ordered during quarantine, so who knows when they'll show up but this is already set to expand a little bit. And as well as getting main pieces, I'm really gonna work at more accessories, more shoes, things like that to make cording easier for me. It's time now, I've built up a decent like staple piece start. I need to get the fun goodies on the side now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. Let me know what your favorite piece was that you saw. And again, if you'd like to see the rest of the wardrobe, my shoes, my cute bags, things like that, please let me know down below as well. I'd be more than happy to film that. I just wanted to start with my favorite things. <laughs> and otherwise, we are at the end. So I will see you all in the next one. Bye.